In this video, we're going to talk about joins using pandas. If you've used relational databases before, you've probably worked with joins. A join is common in SQL for joining two different tables together, but we'll use it for joining data frames to one another. If you haven't used joins before, let's quickly review what they do and what types of joins are available. Christopher Moffat has a great article on codeproject.com that breaks down different joins visually. I recommend a read through it if you're interested, but we'll just focus on his summary graphic. There are some major group distinctions when it comes to joins. The two major questions to think about is, is the join inner or outer, and is it left or right? In the middle of the graphic, we can see what represents an inner join. As you can see, inner joins retrieve only matching rows, so only data that is shared between the two tables or data frames. On the top left, we have what is commonly called a left join or a left outer join. As you can see, a left join takes all of the data from the left table or data frame and any matching data from the right table or data frame. On the top right, we have our right join or right outer join. It takes all data from the right table and any matching data from the left table. So he's also outlined some more complex joins that leave out overlapping data or include all data. You can see them by scrolling down. These are also possible using pandas, but less common. It's good to know they exist in case you need to use these types of joins, but you'll probably be using the main three that we covered. So now we know that ordering of joins matters, left versus right, and that inner and outer joins give us much different data sets. First, let's open up a new Jupyter notebook to do some join work. I'm going to import pandas. In pandas, as we discussed, instead of using tables, we use data frames. And instead of writing SQL, we use a join method. In pandas, left versus right is determined by which data frame you use first in the syntax. The first data frame is the left one, and the second data frame is the right one. I've created some very simple data sets for us to use so we can easily see what's going on. Normally, your data will be much messier, and we'll continue to learn lots of ways to clean it. So when you're doing joins in the wild, make sure that you do any pre-processing you might need to clean it up before your joins. To begin, let's import the main dataset we'll be using, employees.csv. Since I know that this dataset is small, I'm just going to print the entire data frame. I have the four rows with the employees. I see that I have an ID column, so I'm going to set that as my index. I can do so using the setIndex method. Great, now I have my ID as my index. So now I can see that I have a few columns that end in underscore ID. This is a common convention in databases to point to other tables. Depending on your data, it might be more opaque on how to join them. But regardless, if you can find shared columns and you know how they're named, you can join them together. I also have a database for titles. Let's create a new data frame of the titles. So here I knew that the ID was the first column, so I can just set it as the ID column. And so I have a few different titles here. So let's see if I can join this titles data frame with my employees data frame. So here I'm going to use R suffix because I know that my titles database and my employees database both have a column called name. If I didn't supply a suffix, then this would fail. R suffix means to put the suffix on the right data frame. So here I'm using underscore title to remind myself that that's the name that came from the titles data frame. You can also use L suffix, which appends it to the left data frame. Let's take a look. So now that I've run my join, I see that it's only matching one row. If I look back up in my data, I see that I have one, two, three IDs for my titles. And if I take a look at my employees, I see that the title ID column should all be matching. So what's happening here? By default, Pandas attempts to join on index. So here it matched according to those index IDs. Because I have a two ID in my titles table and a two ID in my employees table, it matched Chris to the lead engineer. This is a great option if your indices match. However, this is not the case for our data set. Joining on index is, however, one of the fastest and least painful joins, but for our data set, this means we'd have to reset the index, 
and then set it back again since we likely don't want the title ID to be our index, so it would just add a bunch of unnecessary steps. There's a much easier way that we can use to join this data. I'm going to copy this cell. Here we're going to use the keyword argument on, which allows us to pass a list or a lookup. It will attempt to look for the title in the left data frame and match that to the index on the right. Let's run it now and see if we can get proper matches. Perfect, this is looking a lot better. So now let's see if we can pull in our department data. Okay, so we properly have our data. So I'm gonna save that to a data frame. I'm gonna scroll up, and instead of outputting here, I'm gonna save this. And I'm just gonna call it employ with title. So now I'm gonna see if I can join my departments with my employees with title data frame. Here again, I'm gonna use R suffix. Again, depending on your data frames that you're joining, you may wanna rename your columns first because it can get confusing if you have these long suffixes but it's gonna depend on your data set. So really, you're the one to judge what's readable and what's not. You always have the rename method if you wanna rename the columns first and then join them. So let's run this and see if it works. Okay, so it looks like we have some name departments, but it looks like Sandy has a null value. In Pandas, N-A-N is our null values. If we look here at Sandy's row, we can see that her department ID is seven. When we scroll up to our departments, we see we only have one through four represented. So what Pandas is doing here is that left outer join that we talked about. It's gonna take all of the rows from the employees with title and look for matches in the department's data frame. When it doesn't find matches, it's just gonna simply put null placeholder values. So if we wanted to avoid null values, we could use an inner join. So I can add an extra argument called how. When I run this inner join, I see that the row including Sandy is now gone. What it's giving me is again that inner section. So it's saying, show me only rows from employees with title that have a match in departments. Let's take a look at a right outer join. Here I can see I again lost Sandy's row because here I'm taking all of the rows of the department data frame and I'm just putting in null values when the left data frame doesn't match. So we can see here that the bottom row has a bunch of null values because it represents the sales department, which doesn't match any employees. We can also see that it has some unintended consequences on our index, which we might want to correct for. So now we have two number 12 IDs. I hope this video has helped you feel more confident handling joins and determining how to join your data frames using pandas. I recommend taking time to use some messy data or importing some SQL data to work on joins and see which ones are easiest to manipulate. Keep in mind that joining on a shared index is the least painful and the fastest way, so try and resort to that when possible. Thanks for watching this O'Reilly training video. If you'd like more information on this topic, click on Learn More. Don't forget to subscribe to the O'Reilly Video Training YouTube channel for more tutorials, and be sure to like us on Facebook.